Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of the Hambini Show. In today's episode of Engineering for Those Without Oestrogen, we have this, the Look 695, all the way from Tunisia. They like to make you think it's made in France, but it's not made in Tunisia. This one um, came in because a chap wanted a bottom bracket to go into this frame. Now this frame, if you're not fully aware, um, uses a proprietary bottom bracket standard called a Look BB65. Now that's not widely used, only Look make cranks for it, and he wanted to fit a Shimano crank set. So, we're gonna fit one of these. Now in the process of fitting one of these, I'm gonna show you the measuring gear I have, because loads of people have asked questions about measuring, this, that, and the other, and accuracy, and all that kind of shit. So without further ado, let me begin. So this is the BB65 bottom bracket. Now in this bike, it's also used on a 795, not the Blade RS model. Um, it is an aluminium insert that goes into the carbon frame. Now, the way they've done this is they've got some additional holes on the inside. So if you need to run DI2 wires or something like that, you can do. And it also doubles up for those of you on mechanical to be able to run mechanical. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fit one of these, if I can just get it into shot, which is at the moment just a plain BB65 to Shimano bottom bracket. I haven't put the bearings in. Um, but we're going to show you how to do that. But before we go any further, let me uh, let me show you how you can do some little checks on this before you actually install it. Right, you're going to have to forgive me in advance because I'm not going to be able to manipulate my hands in this position. I'm good at manipulating other things like vaginas, but not at my bottom bracket. Now, we have this is a look frame. It's considered to be one of the best in terms of dimensional accuracy, but it's not infallible. So just to check this, and a lot of mechanics don't um, check these things because they're obviously too intelligent to check them or can't be fucked. Um, but a common way of doing it is with a vernier, digital vernier caliper. Um, the, you know, the anal amongst you will say that's a digital caliper and not a digital vernier caliper, but who gives a shit? Right, you can put that in, wiggle it round, and you get a number, 64.87. I can guarantee that's wrong, uh, but it, it just gives you a fairly crude indication of the number that's in there, 64.72. Again, I don't believe that number for one second. Now this is a fairly good vernier, it's a Mitutoyo, um, but we can go a little, we can go a step further than that. We can actually use what's known as a stick mic. So this is my collection of stick mics. Now, you can see from the usage of these, I predominantly use maybe that lot for what I do, but I bought the set um, probably about 25, 30 years ago, um, and I've had it ever since. So, you know, you buy it once and then you use it forever. This is the, the actual measuring instrument, um, and it only measures sort of 10 mil. Um, you've only got 10 mil of travel in there and you can just turn it one way and out it comes and then you've got to read it. Now I'm not going to explain to you how to read it, but there's plenty of other channels on YouTube that show you how to uh, read them. This bit on the end allows you to change the, uh, the ball that you're going to measure. So if you put that one in, you've suddenly got that much range to measure in. For the purposes of this, that bottom bracket is 65 mil so what we've got is we've got this which is a 25 to 75 uh, extension so that goes in there but it also comes with a small tube and the small tube it's actually a machine space that says 12 on it so when you put that onto there and then screw that in when that's zero the distance across there is 50 add 12 so it gives you 63. So you have to end up doing a bit of addition. But I'll show you how that works in a minute. But before we carry on any further, I'll show you the next level up beyond this one. 
Now, this one is my bore gauge, and I've rarely used this. And you can, it's just a faff to use, so I don't use it very much. Um, really, only when I'm filling with the car do I use this, because you need to get the depth. So, for example, it's a similar kind of principle, but that goes onto there. Yeah, and then you can measure at a deep depth. Um, but it is a, it is a faff for uh, a uh, bottom bracket because you've, you're obviously quite far away from the bike frame. So you can use that. You can get them with smaller um, arms and reach, but then you just may as well use a stick mic. So that's, that's the next level up. It's a bit of a faff. I don't really expect most mechanics to have this kind of gear, but um, you know that, that's that. They should really have that sort of gear. So I haven't gone for the full-blown CMMM today, CMM, which is coordinate measuring machine. Um, I've gone back to the stick mic. I'm just going to show you how you use this. So to start off with, the zero point. So zero this, and that will give you 50 there or thereabouts. Let me just zero that. So that is 50 plus 12. So that gives us 60 Two. So if we get the vernier out, just so that you can verify that measurement, so you can just see it, and turn this on, move it to 62. Yeah, 62. So that's how that works. I haven't got that in the right place, but you know, we're there or thereabouts. Now, I trust this over this any day of the week. Okay, this is easy to use, but this is accurate. Once you've got that, we now need to, you know, it's, it's a, a rattling fit in there. So we just need to move this out. So we know the target size is 65. So if I move this out to three indicated on there, Getting close. Let's go for that one. Two and a half. Three. Okay, so we're close there. Just turn this a little bit more. And we should start to bite. Okay, so reading that, we've got 63.03. Going this way. Oh, it's a bit tighter this way. That's 62, 63, uh, sorry, 65.01. Did I say 63? I meant to say 65. And then you can just go around and do that. Now we can do the other side as well. But, um, yeah, it's about 65, just over 65. We need to make sure all of these surfaces are impeccably clean. So using a cloth, this has been washed, but the dirt wouldn't come out. So just clean it. I mean, I have cleaned this before and I'm just doing this to please people. Once that's done, um, we need to apply a small amount of retaining compound into both sides. So here goes the retaining compound. It's mainly there to act as a lubricant. I've already sprayed this with activator and let it go off. We'll let it evaporate. Now we can assemble the bottom bracket. So this is the drive side, so we'll pop that through. Just get it virtually seated. Um, this is the non-drive side, it's got an O-ring in there. Now some people might ask, well what's to stop the bottom bracket flying out? Well it's the radial forces that keep it in. Some people think you need a clamp to hold it in there, like a screw thread or something like that. That's not true. This lip inside is your axial stop and these things are held in with radial forces and the stop is the lip it's not there to stop the thing coming out anyway let's pop that over get that started and then we need one of these and i'm just using that as a spacer and the handle. 
and then we just begin turning. We just need to sort that bit out. Part now. Now we can put the bearings back in and give that a quick clean. So these are the bearings, they are 6806s, they're NTNs, so we can put these in now. Put them on my metal presses. These are steel, I don't use aluminium for uh, presses. Pop that in. Okay, that's all home, so we can take this apart now. This is the bare bottom bracket, there's the bearing on the, that is the drive side. We can just put the caps in now to finish the job. And we'll get a crank and just give it a quick spin. So this is a Shimano crank, um, it's a Dura-Ace one. This is scheduled to go back to um, Shimano, although Merlin cycles have been a bit problematic with it because it's, it's actually split. Um, it's split down the seam, down the joint, um, but we can test it anyway with this. Give it a bit of preload. Okay, probably needs a little bit more, but jobs are good in. So that's a a look six nine five with a Hambini BB sixty five to Shimano bottom bracket. I'll take this out now so we can just have a closer look of it. So this is the finished article. You can see it's a fairly seamless finish. Um, there's some marks from the previous bottom bracket install there, um, but the rest of it is uh, is pretty good. There's, there's, there looks like there's no visible joints. And that is the other side. Um, again, that, that tape's just there to uh, cover the serial number of the bike, um, but there we go. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed that 15 or 20 minutes of testosterone fueled action, then be sure to whack the like button and hit subscribe. Uh, please check out the website, hambini.com. I am now on Instagram, shitstagram, whatever the kids call it these days, and on Facebook. So, um, but I never look at it, so don't go on there. Uh, and as always, Keep banging your hairdressers.